Hello everyone, my name is Asif Mujaffa. I'm a solutions architect here at AWS. Um, today I'm going to talk about deploying and monitoring SQL Server high ability workloads on AWS with Amazon RDS. In my previous talk, we covered deploying and monitoring SQL Server high ability workloads on AWS with Amazon EC2. So today we're going to talk about Amazon RDS. So SQL Server on AWS comes in two flavors, Amazon RDS for SQL Server, which is our many servers offering provides you single click of high availability and it comes with license included instances. Whereas on SQL Server on Amazon EC2 is a self managed VM service, which is where you are in a full control of the SQL Server. You install, you maintain the OS level, the DBMS, the SQL Server software itself, and then um, the configuration of SQL Server itself. And then in terms of the high availability, you design it, you implement it, you configure it. So it's totally different by you. It comes in two flavors, such as license included or be, uh, bring your license instances. So let's just dive, in, de dive in a bit deeper into Amazon RDS itself. So Amazon RDS for SQL Server, as you can see, we've got, we got scaling, high availability, DBS backup, DBS patching, DBS install and maintenance, and OS level patching. That undifferentiated heavy lifting is what we call it Amazon the admin task. So I'm already taken care for you. And all you have to do is bring your data and start running with it by that lets you focus on delivering the business value tasks, the adding the business values to the everyday to day tasks you do, and that enables you to do the high level tuning and scheme optimization. While you don't have the in-house DevOps expert, it doesn't really matter because all the DevOps admin level tasks are, are taken, care, take, taken care of for you as it's a managed service. And at the same time, if something goes wrong underlying with the host itself or the instance you're running, it's a, it has an automatic host replacement, so you don't have to worry about high availability and, and the um, hardware level failure because it's a fully managed service. So on the other hand, when you have SQL Server Amazon EC2, you are in full control of the DevOps instance. You have to do the scaling, you have to do the capacity planning, you have to do the high availability, you have to do the DevOps backups, the DevOps patching, the DevOps install, and maintenance and always patching that all that admin tasks, which doesn't really add any value to the business process or are a value to any business or doesn't deliver any business value to, that you need to carry on. And then you need to think about your high availability, the clustering, all that options. But so that's what it is. So let's just let's just look at what RDS has have to offer in terms of high availability. So so all these high ability list will have well, let's just look at the single AZ deployment. So you know you can have a single AZ and multi AZ deployments within RDS. So let's just look at single AZ deployment. In a single AZ deployment, what we have, you have a SQL Server instance running on an um, um DevOps running on a SQL Server instance. It's it's dipping the data, it's is it's writing the data in a volume. That volume will be synchronously replicated within that AZ, within that region. So we say, for example, if you're running in the EU West one region um, and you're um, you're uh, you're running in one A of the um, EU West EU West one A availability zone, that instance would be protected within that AZ. If something goes wrong where that instance is running or that particular hardware or that particular node, then the instance will fail over to the other node where the data volume has already been synchronously replicated, so you don't lose any data. But your recovery time varies from minutes to several hours, depending on the type of outage you have within that AZ. Sometimes it's network, sometimes it's a database, sometimes you have um, hardware level failures, and that, that would require some, some time to come. Um, depending on the what, what level of failure you're going to have in, in the single AZ. So let's just look at the multi-AZ deployment. So multi-AZ deployments is, is literally what, you, what you're doing is adding you're, already protect, you're, you're protecting your data or two AZs within that single region. So you have AZ1A and AZ1B, like AZ1 or AZ2 in our scenario, within that region. So you, you, your, your data is primarily protected within that AZ1 during a synchronous volume replication. But we, on top of that, what we do, we synchronously replicate the data across the different region, uh, sorry, across the different availability zone AZ2. Um, Pardon me for um, misquoting that. So it's a, it's a AZ2 where the data is synchronously replicated. And what that does, it, it gives you the ability to fail over automatically to the other AZ if something if something to go something to go wrong with your ability zone one or AZ1, then your AZ2 replica will become primary automatically. 
and it typically the uh, failure time or recovery time will be less than 60 seconds and it's the failure itself is triggered by the SQL server and what we use we use SQL server always on availability groups for SQL 2016 enterprise edition and Davis mirroring for other versions and editions so let's just go and build it so we, what we'll do we'll start with multi-AZ RDS deployment so what I'm going to do I'm going to go over and I'm going to create a um, I'm going to go in my console um, go to RDS and I'm going to say create database and the create database that should give me this two option this screen create database so I'm going to create on standard create so here are two options you have you have standard create and easy create within standard create it's it's the configuration which you can choose and tailor it to your requirement whereas easy create is something combined which we have combined with the best practices configuration and then once the database is created then you can change few configurations whereas standard create is completely tailored for you uh, completely open for you to pick and choose the configuration you want to deploy so let's just get started so i'm going to choose engine type sql server i'm going to go sql server enterprise edition and good news, we have SQL Server 2019 available now uh, with Amazon RDS sit for SQL Server. And this is a license included instance. My, um, we choose what template we're going to use, whether we're going to use production or dev or test. I'm going to use production in this scenario. I'm going to name this instance as SQL HA, SQL HA demo. And I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to provide my admin password, which is what I'm going to use for the first time when I'm going to connect to the instance. So I'm going to use the password for that. I'm going to provide that. I'm going to repeat the same password. And I'm going to use memory optimized instances for SQL Server. I'm going to start with Opera XL Large because this is a demo. So I'm just going to get the smallest possible size. In terms of storage, I'm going to use Provision IOP SSD and I'm going to go 20 gig for now because this is a demo. Then you can go up to ter terabyte and then I'm going to leave Provision IOP so that you can change. And I'm going to click on Enable Storage Auto Scaling as Grow as my database keeps growing. And then the maximum storage, storage threshold, I've left it for terabyte, but that can be modified anytime. And then I can go up to 16 terabyte here, as you can see. Um, uh, with the availability and durability, I'm going to say I want the multi-AZ deployment. And then I'm in terms of the VPC, I've got my own VPC side of block. That's what I want to deploy into. If I go dive into additional configuration, then I can choose the subnet groups. That's what it's going to do, um, whether I need to give public access or no. But standard practice is the database. We don't provide public access. We just keep it private. So I'm just going to say no. Existing VPC uh, security groups, I've got MS SQL database security group, which has been created for me while I was doing the EC2 implementation. So I'm going to use the same thing, which is actually opening up 1433 to my Bastion host in my public subnet uh, and my other application service. Um, if I want to bring in my Windows authentication AD, I could simply say, click on that and then I can bring my AD. Um, which has been either you can have your on-premises AD by AD connector or you can have your own AWS managed AD which which is available here so I can I can choose uh, but for 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 this demo I'm not going to use that and if I go into additional configuration you have Davis parameter groups you have option groups time zones so such as UTC or anything these parameter groups are default and option group is something which you can change later and in terms of collation, it's, it's a standard collation, default collation, SQL Latin General 1 CIAS, which is what you have with SQL Server when you install it on, on premises as well as a default. So, backup retention, I'm going to enable automatic backups. Um, backup window, I'm going to leave no preference for now. Enable protection for deletion, yes. Um, master key with, um, with RDS, I'm going to leave it default. Performance insights. This is a very good thing. I'm going to come back to you when we talk about monitoring. So I'm going to enable that. I'm going to leave the retention period for default seven. If I go more than seven days, there is a charge for that. So for the demo purpose, I'm going to leave it for seven days. And, and I'm going to go into the enha enable enhanced monitoring. I'm going to talk about this when I when I come to it. And I'm going to go give me a one second global granularity. So I can drop it down to one second, five, five seconds, 10 seconds, and up to 60 seconds. So I'll just go give me a second while I sort of so there is no average or aggregation. I just want to see real time and I can know whether there is a charge for that. So in terms of log exports, I'm going to go give me agent error, agent log and error log. Export that to CloudWatch because I want to see that everything in the cloud rather than having to go into the instance and look at it. So I can just simply look in it and then I can do my SNS alerts and so on and so forth based on that. Um, if you want to do a minor version upgrade, you can do that. 
or you can leave it in um, you can work with your own terms on this and then I'm just going to simply say create database um, I already have instance created here for SQL Server 2016 uh, with Enterprise Edition and SQL Server 2016 Standard Edition. So those are up and running. So I'm going to go into my Bastion host. So what I did, I just simply went in, picked up this endpoint and went to my Bastion host. So I'm going to bring that Bastion host on, my, on our screen now. So here we go. I've, I've just connected that to that Bastion host uh, to that SQL Server 2016. RDS standard instance using my admin user and I'm using I'm connecting to the listener using my same admin user for 2016 enterprise edition so let's just dive into the configuration here so if you look at the connectivity it talks about cider block it has got and if you go to the configuration that's actually talk about what configuration what version of instance you're running which is 20, 20, 20, 2019 here I'm going to use um my instance class I've used and if it's a multi-AZ or not. If I am multi-AZ and then it tells you what technology it's using. It's using mirroring on a standard edition as we said um, always on is available on enterprise edition for SQL 2016 onwards. And on my secondary secondary zone or second AZ a multi, uh, secondary AZ is EU REST 1B and 1A being my primary. And published logs is my cloud watch is agent error. So I'm going to do the same thing for my uh, my instance here, which is uh, which is my enterprise, which is using always on. As you can see here, I've got my listener endpoint and my port here. Uh, it's deployed in the same deployed in the same subnet, our same VPC. I'm going to go to the configuration side, and I'm going to see within the configuration side, as you can see, I, it's a multi AZ deployment, and it's using always on, and it's on EUS one B as a secondary agent. So that's deployed up and running and I'm connected to it. So let's just come, let's just go back and see when it comes to monitoring, what happens. So on, on RDS SQL Server monitoring, you've got two options. You've got CloudWatch, which is what you have, which is where you're going to get your CPU, memory, your disk level stats and your metrics. And then you can have your job schedule or metrics available. And this is the strategic direction for RDS to integrate for monitoring. So everything which you want to have in terms of SQL Server metrics, RDS metrics will be available in the CloudWatch. And then furthermore, we have created a performance insight. Um, that's a new option available for you to that gives you common RDS management interface. So within RDS interface, you can go and dive deeper into the performance metrics, which is what you do on premises today or, or you're on your EC2 instances where you want to know what what particular query is running, what's my slower running query, what's what's blocking me, what are my wait times, what's my PLE, what's my wait time, and what's my log flushes, what's my disk time, and all of that, all those goodies are available on the performance inside. So let's just look at it, how it looks like in a console. So I'm going to go to the monitoring on my enterprise instance. As you can see, my CPU utilization is really nearly at about 10%. I'm running some queries, which I'll show you in a minute when we go to the um, Bastion host we're looking at. So my write IOPS, my read IOPS, it's pretty much standard stuff. So I'm gonna go to the enhanced monitoring. In enhancement, you can see a fillable memory and then SQL Server total memory is about 684 meg is what SQL Server using. My CPU user, is literally not doing much. My level disk space is 19 gig out of 20 gig, which is what is allocated, 98% free space, total gig space, as you can see, when we created the instance, we allocated 20 gig. So let's just go and look at performance insights. That's something that had been introduced recently on RDS. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start diving into my SQL HAA demo. Uh, that's my enterprise instance. I'm gonna go, give me five minutes, last five minutes and in here, I can choose what metrics I want to plot in this particular screen and in dashboard. So I've got active transaction total. Um, give me write transaction, how many times I have written. Give me total logs flush. And um, give me user connections. And I'm going to go tell me about my PLE and give me my buffer hit rate cache ratio, um, buffer cache hit ratio. And then I'm going to see my SQL recompilation. So I want to know how's my buffer is doing in a way. And I'm going to plot that and I'm going to, and I'm going to auto, um, say auto refresh. So you can see there have been, there is data coming through now. Um, and you can see it's about 742 transactions that's been running. And as you can scroll down number of connections, so you can see here, 
is about 29 connection. The page like PLE counter is sitting about four. Is about my PLE counter is is about four one four one nine. That's quite high. And my buffer cache hit ratio is sitting at about 100%. So that tells me my SQL server is in a healthy state. So if I come down in terms of my CPU plot, what's been happening on, on my SQL server. So on the database load, my average active sessions, um, you can see there are maximum vCPUs. That's four vCPUs instance we have chosen. And what's happening here? What's running slow? What's running high? So we have HDR sync coming, which is we're replicating the data into the other side. We are writing the logs as I'm writing the data and, and, and the CPU. In here, I have got my total top wet. So what's my percentage per, per wet type? And that's my HDR sync commit. That's my replication, synchronous replication on the other side. My top SQL, I'm inserting some data, which is what's it's running and it's telling me I'm using that much CPU, that much is my sync commit, and that much is my write log. In terms of top hosts, uh, what, what host is using uh, SQL Server? And I'm going to use my my users as well. So I'm just using admin user here for the demo. So my, you can see per user how much CPU I'm using, how much wait time um, on the HDR, and how much wait time I have got on the write log. So this is pretty cool. Um, and that's really good feature available. So let's just go into the actual instance itself. So this is the instance I've created. I've created a database called SQL HA Demo, which is where, um, so for example, if I go in here and I just simply say, hey, SQL, let's create a SQL HA Demo 2 as in database. And give it another minute or two, and that should simply get replicated on the other side and it should come as synchronized so while it's getting replicated um, getting configured to get replicated on the other other az we just look at what's happening on that dashboard here i'm going to go into availability groups and i go to dashboard and uh, show dashboard and uh, that's what brings the dashboard on that tells me my primary replica and um, is this instance which is what i'm connected to um, and it's a synchronous commit mode and it's automatic failover and seeding mode is manual um, which is what has happened and then in terms of failover readiness there is no data loss synchronized now it's simply it's completely synchronized and then in terms of the database on both sides and as you can see my other database has just literally got added which we created sql, SQL hd demo 2 so it's pretty much everything you just create the database you bring your data and the underlying high availability task is taken care for you. So as you can refresh this data, you can see this all the data, so HDMO2 has got added here. So my audience listener is already available. So if I go in here, um, so in terms of mirroring, so similar sort of principle, you go and create new database, so it's equal HDMO2. That's gonna get created. So let's just review what's happening on this side. So. I'm running these databases on this particular platform, um, which are in a synchronized mode. That's my endpoint, and it's a full safety mode. So it's synchronous and automatic failover, and the timeout is 30 seconds. So let's just see how much data has been replicated and how much writes. So you can see database mirroring is using those many reads and that those many writes, and particularly on that side, those many reads and those many writes on endpoint ID 655336. So let's just run another query. This is a DMV query again, similar sort of thing what you do on premises. You run the primary and principal and mirror. It gives you that, that particular database, the size of the data, and what software in system is it high, high performance or high safety? Well, high performance means asynchronous mode, but you're running in a high safety mode, which is what synchronous commit which provides automatic failover. So I'm gonna run another query here to find out if there is any pending in terms of, until, look at that, SQL HA Demo 2 has been repl started replicating. Um, that's it, that's pretty much everything I had to cover you to guys today. I hope you have enjoyed my talk and I look forward to speak to you guys soon again. Thank you very much for watching, goodbye.